Welcome back to Retcon Lang, everybody, and as promised, today we will be retconning a Dovizul. Now, for the three of you who haven't played Skyrim, Dovizul is the language of the dragons, or Dova, who once ruled over mankind, but were then overthrown, their leader banished forward into time, specifically the, to the present day, in which the game of Skyrim takes place. Dovizul is spoken in-game by several Dova NPCs, and is featured in the game mechanic known as Shouts, which is essentially a set of cooldown powers that get progressively stronger as you collect the three words of each shout. It's a neat little mechanic, and probably one of my favorite parts of the whole game. However, the language itself leaves much to be desired. Getting right into it, we'll start with phonology. This is actually more of a complicated question than one might think. Dovazul is documented near exclusively through fan analyses, and due mainly to the fact that no one single person created Dovazul, it was a collaborative effort, and the anglicization of various voice actors, there is a large amount of inconsistency in the way Dovazul is articulated. To top that off, there's also discrepancies with the various romanizations and what they actually stand for. Uh, for example, Jan Misely chose to analyze the letter Q as a labialized velar stop, but it could just as easily be some sort of uvular sound or even a simple qua cluster to reflect English spelling. There's really no way to tell. Building off of this, our vowels quite clearly demonstrate that English was the primary inspiration for Dovazul's phonology, which of course is quite consistent with the group of monolingual anglophones first continent. The rhotic vowels in particular are rather incriminating. Now for Dovazul 2, I've made some romanization regularizations, as well as solidified the mysterious Q as a KW cluster, consistent with the presence of other similar onset clusters. I also changed the rhotic vowels to vowel trill sequences, and reinterpreted the romanization as one representing a simple five vowel system, with several vowels that occur in hiatus, such as in Thu'um or Koga'an. Now one thing I think our friends over at Bethesda absolutely nailed was the aesthetic of the writing system. Inspired by cuneiform, all the glyphs are composed of simple wedge shapes made by dragon claw marks in stone, and it's really clever! And weirdly enough, it bears a striking resemblance to symbols featured on an obelisk in an episode of the original Star Trek. Which is interesting, though I doubt it was intentional. The underlying system of Dovazul writing is, to put it simply, boring. In most ways, it's a simple Latin alphabet cipher, with the exception of there being a set of dedicated glyphs for the diphthongs. However, Xa gets one letter, Sha, Ma, and Tha are all written with digraphs in the same manner as they are in English, it is all very Englishy. So I decided that for Dovazul 2, I wanted to maintain the original aesthetic as much as possible, whilst completely reforging the underlying system. Introducing Dovame. This name means Dragon Scratches because I'm a hack. Dovame is a syllabary at its heart, with both CV and VC glyphs, however the system quickly grows more complicated. To begin, there's the manner in which Dovame transcribes consonant clusters. It accomplishes this through the use of a null vowel glyph. Take the word dra. To begin, you take the glyph for da, and stack it on top of the null glyph, turning it into a singular consonant da. Then, you stack the ra glyph atop the al glyph to form the ral syllable, nice and intuitive. Then, d and ral combined to make dral. It's important to note that the stacking of the glyph is important. If one were to transcribe the ra and al glyphs as separate tall glyphs, then it would instead say dra al. The stacking is used for other functions as well. You can use it to form a sort of digraph. For example, the word fus is spelled puhu null us at a first glance. However, one can see the puhu glyphs are stacked and possess a matching vowel, making them instead a glyph notating the historical aspirated labial stop. Dovizul used to have a three-part stop distinction between voiced, unvoiced, and unvoiced aspirated stops. However, the older aspirated stops eventually merged with the fricatives, though not in an entirely straightforward manner. 
For example, the historical aspirated labial became a labial fricative, contrasting with the labiodental. But this unstable situation led to dissimilation and the old F became the dental fricative. The aspirated alveolar became S rather simply, and the aspirated velar became a velar fricative, later debucalizing to match the glottal fricative. So it is thus that the dental fricative gets its own column, but F must be written with a special digraph, and S and H may both be spelled two different ways depending on their etymologies. Likewise, it is through this stacking action that a few other phonemes are transcribed. Qua-type clusters, and glad clusters in general, are essentially treated as vowels. For example, to write yul, the word for fire, you write the i-glyph stacked on top of the ol glyph. Or qua, meaning armor or scales, is written as the ku syllable stacked with the a-glyph. On top of all these shenanigans, there are a number of logograms and determiners used alongside the syllable glyphs. All in all, I wanted Dovame to have the sort of Baroque feeling of a truly ancient script, which the original lacked in my opinion. Moving on from that hefty topic, we come to grammar! Dovazul is an interesting case. We have two primary sources for analyzing its grammar. We have the Song of the Dragonborn and the in-game dialogue, and there is quite a discrepancy between the two, let me tell you. From the standpoint of the Song of the Dragonborn, we have a fairly open and shut case of an English relax, to the point where the English and Dovazul versions have the exact same rhyming scheme. Needless to say, it is not a great source of inspiration. Conversely, we have the in-game dialogue, which is also very Englishy, but has a number of quirks. Now, to be entirely fair, I'm unsure how many of these strangisms were purposeful design choices, but we shall analyze them anywho. One thing that sticks out to me is the systematic dropping of the copula in state of clauses, as well as the dropping of pronouns, specifically object pronouns, which to me seems more the result of lines being clipped short, but that's neither here nor there. An example of the latter may be found in the phrase <laughs> spoken by the antagonist, Alduin, and meaning, the Elder Scroll did not defeat me, though more literally translated as Elder Scroll did no defeat which sounds weirdly poetic to me. Another trait consistent throughout our entire corpus is nouns and verbs being very flexible, with verbs being derived from nouns with seemingly no added morphology. All these traits combined led to the verb system I created for Dovazul 2. Firstly, Dovazul 2 is a grammatically tenseless language, instead relying more heavily on aspectual and modal information to convey the ordering of events. It is also a language with polypersonal agreement and a Basque-like series of mandatory auxiliaries. These auxiliaries handle most of the verbal inflections, with the exception of the perfect-imperfect distinction, which is handled by a stem alternation scheme. To derive a verb from a noun, all one must do is attach the appropriate auxiliary. And this even applies to state of clauses, so for example, to say, I am the dragonborn, you would say, Zume Durovakin. Sort of like saying, I perform the action of Dragonborn. Alduin's previous line, The Elder Scroll Did Not Defeat Me, would be, Kel Hito Kofunvik. That transitions nicely into some of the more specific elements of verb agreement patterns. Dovazul 2 is a direct inverse language meaning that in the verb template, the subject and object pronouns don't follow a specific pattern but rather conform to a person hierarchy, a sort of order of animacy, which in this case follows the fairly simple order of first, second, third, and third inanimate persons. Each personage has a slot in the verb template that does not change without regard to what argument is which. This means that the subject and object cannot be determined from the agreement markers alone, Rather, the nature of the language is to assume that it is the argument of higher animacy acting upon that with lower animacy. When it's the other way around, you have a special inverse marker, a bit of verbal morphology, which reverses the standard assumption. In Dobazul's case, this inverse marker evolved from a passivization strategy, which in turn evolved from a very old form of the copula, coal. Now, we've been ignoring a very important aspect of Dobazul. Oh, 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 it's magic! 
you know, shouts. Breathing fire, clearing the skies, eating bandits off of cliffs for a lark. Let's address this. There's not really an explanation for why Dovizil ma is magic. It just sort of is. There are words in Dovizil that do magic. There are words that do not. And sometimes the magic words do not do the magic. It is all very inconsistent seeming. So I proposed that it's the actual volume that makes the shout magical, hence the term shout. However, I, I think that's lame. And also, the um simply means a voice. So it's not a wholly accurate translation to call them shouts. I propose, however, a hypothesis. The Dova, as descendants of the Edada and the children of Akatosh, have a connection to the underlying music of reality. People very deep into the lore of Elder Scrolls will know what I'm getting at. Essentially, I propose that Dovazul words, or rather a specific selection of them, much like Dwemeri tonal architecture, are able to strike a certain chord or note in the undercurrent of reality, creating changes in the mundus that we experience. Essentially, one taps into their deep understanding of the word and the music of reality in order to perform tonal magics. This is why the Greybeards and Ulfric Stormcloak must meditate for many long years upon the meanings of their thoons, and why the Dragonborn is so special. They can absorb the native intuition and knowledge of dragons and tap into those tonal magics. And furthermore, I propose that shouts themselves are not actually grammatical, they are instead a form of list poetry. Essentially, a shout is a kind of poem where one attempts to describe a desired effect in a short list. The three-word pattern itself is not grammatical nor magical, it's simply a cultural affectation. I actually have evidence for this in-game, which I admittedly stumbled upon after I came to the Thu'umis poetry conclusion, but it supports it nonetheless. Mirak, in the boss fight at the summit of Apocrypha, uses a unique shout that the player can't learn. It allows him to absorb the soul of a still-living dragon. It has a shout-like effect, but doesn't follow the three-word pattern, supporting my theory that the three-word pattern is simply a practice, not a requirement. Beyond this, I have one final idea regarding Dovazul as a magical language. As stated earlier, under my model only some words are magical. However, we do sometimes need to talk about fire without actually making fire. And likewise, we must sometimes talk about the cold without bringing the temperature of the room down. I've classed the words featured in shouts as animate nouns, and those nouns which do not produce magic as inanimate. This is not a true grammatical distinction, but a categorization of convenience. So. For talking about animate nouns when magic is undesirable, the Dova have devised a system. The animate nouns themselves aren't magical. When loaned into another tongue, they lose their power, such as when Parthenax asks the player to speak the word Yol. He does so in the player's language, thus no fire is produced. It's the fact that the animate nouns are attached to the deeper truth, the tonal magic, that makes them strike their magical notes in the undercurrent of reality. Thus, to avoid the magic, you must slightly distract yourself from the deeper meaning. In essence, you use a euphemism. In English, we have a sort of euphemism treadmill for rude words. One rude word is replaced with a more polite one, but then the polite one becomes impolite itself, as we all remember what precisely it is meant to mean. The same thing occurs with dovizel animate noun euphemisms. They're slowly replaced with more and more elaborate constructions, as the intended indirectness becomes more direct and produces magic when none is wanted. So while uh, Sakwo Dova, or the Red Dragon, was once a fair replacement for Yul, it is now no longer. These euphemisms vary from Dova to Dova, such as the Bright Red Dancer, Vien Sakwo Bomare, or Krenmal, meaning the Little Sun. Those of you who get around a bit more on the conlanging parts of YouTube might recognize this concept. Another YouTuber named Nakari Speardane has a video on a pretty similar concept for her Circe culture, and this is indeed where I got the idea. So, 
props and proper credit to Nakari for her creativity. And if you haven't watched her videos, just stop this one right now and do it. Stop. Stop this video. Pause it. Go watch all of her videos. She has more than I do, and they're all lovely and very creative. Thanks everyone for sticking around for episode 2. I, I had a lot of fun designing the writing system and the verb system for our, our little fan inversion of Dovazul. I had intended for this video to come out a whole week ago, but as they say, life happens and I got a bit behind. At any rate, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe, violate the personal space of that like button, etc, etc. The next episode of Retconling will be over the Rokin language from Warframe, though I will be taking a break from all this intense speed langing and be producing some other content. The next video will be a summary and breakdown of one of my favorite books, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. I'll see you all then.